so many things to share with you in this video. So of course I'm going to share with you a sewing make, but before I do that, I also want to share with you some fabric that I got in the mail. I think I mentioned in a couple videos before, I don't know if it was the last video or not, but I mentioned that I was waiting on some fabric to come in the mail and I got one of the packages. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it. I'm excited. When I first got this, I could not remember what I ordered. But then I was filling in the package and now I remember. So if I'm thinking right, it's pink. Oh yeah, it's pink, I see it, and it's a knit. Oh, I'm excited. I have been into pink a lot this year. And I think it started, maybe it started last year. Yeah, it did because it was right after the breast cancer awareness month that I really started getting into pink. But this is such a nice knit fabric. And what I have in mind for this is a cardigan because it's very see-through. But it's really nice. And actually, let me see where I purchased it from because I think it was Fabric Mart, but I can't remember for sure. Oh, there's no label in here or anything. It says it's from somewhere in Pennsylvania. Penn Avenue, but it doesn't tell me on the top who it's from. And I've been doing a lot of shopping and I just can't remember where I purchased it from. Oh, wait, 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 okay, here's a, here's a label, perfect. Okay, this does look like a Fabric Mart label. Um, it doesn't say who it's from, but it looks like one of those labels that I, I see on Fabric Mart fabrics, so. Yes, it's a polyester lycra sweater knit. Gentle wash. Two and a half yards. So yeah, I think this is from Fabric Mart. So I'm excited about this. And I just kind of wanted to hang out with you guys and kind of chat. I've been looking at a couple of articles online and I kind of wanted to share with you some of the things that I learned while I was looking through some of these sewing articles. It was pretty interesting. And I thought I would just polish my nails while I'm in here. So I just picked up this little white color and I just want to polish my nails and hang out with you guys. So before I share with you some of the articles that I read or some of the things that I read in the articles, I wanted to mention one of the patterns that I've sewn recently that I am planning to donate. And it is Simplicity 6, I'm sorry, Simplicity 8657. So that is the hack pattern. And I made this pattern twice. So I made it as a dress. And then of course, you know, if you've been watching, I also made it as a top. I made the top first. And I made some alterations and made a few changes after the first time that I made the top. So I did make some changes for the dress. I took the seam in in the back and I raised the neckline, but I didn't end up raising it enough. And now that I have a top and a dress, I was like, well, I just don't see myself making this pattern again. I will wear the two pieces that I have already but then I'm just gonna go ahead and just donate this pattern and then maybe someone else can, can use it. So one of the articles that I was looking at online regarding sewing, it said that if you are stranded on a desert island with only one fabric to sew, that fabric should be Ponte. And the reason is because Ponte is stable and it also, it's a knit, so you get the comfort of a knit, but it's stable. Also, Ponte is easy to cut and easy to sew. 
So I thought that was pretty cool. I like sewing with Ponte knit for those same reasons because I do find that it's very, very easy to sew. And I like the way it hangs. I like the structure that it gives. So I thought that was pretty cool. Now, if I was answering the question, me personally, I think if I was stranded on an island with only one fabric to sew, I know for a fact that it would be some type of woven because I prefer sewing with woven over knit. But for me, I think I would go with some type of cotton. I just love cotton. I think it's so easy to work with. I also like linen. Linen does, of course, wrinkle quite a bit. But I like to sew with it. But yeah, I think for me, I would go with some type of cotton. I really, really like denim. If I could make almost everything in denim, I think I would. So gingham and denim, those are my two favorite woven type of fabrics. Gingham because I like the print. And denim because it's denim. I just love it. I love denim. And it's cotton. You could do so much with, with denim. Okay, so moving on to my next discovery or something that I read that I thought was so interesting is an article that said when you are gathering fabric together or gathering fabric, your gathers will come out prettier if you use the smallest stitch that you can get away with. And I'm sure what they mean by get away with, or I'm sure when they refer to getting away with it, that it would have to do with the thickness of your fabric. So, you know, if it's thinner, you may be able to get away with a shorter stitch than if your fabric is thicker. So, the sewing make that I'm going to share with you today I actually was able to give this a try. So the longest stitch on my machine is a 5.0 and that's what I usually gather with all the time whenever I'm gathering something. But once I read this, I was like, oh, okay. I will give it a try and so I shortened my stitch. I didn't want to shorten it too much, but I shortened it to 4.0 just to give that a try to see what I thought and I liked it. I liked it much better and I was like, okay. And I may have even been able to go down to a 3.0, but I didn't even try that. I just thought I'd start with a 4.0 and see what that looked like. And I ended up just doing that around all the places that needed to be gathered. Speaking of going around all the places that need to be gathered, another thing that the article said was that when you are gathering your fabric in a round, a lot of times the pattern directions will tell you to sew until you get to a seam, like sew until you get to the side seam, for example. So you put your gathering threads, two or three, gathering long stitches around. And then when you come to a side seam, for example, you would stop sewing and then pick up and start sewing again on the other side of the seam. So the seam would be here. You would so up until you got to the seam, stop, and then start your gathering stitches again on the other side of the seam. Well, the article that I read said that you could just sew that in one long stitch or two, you know, if you're using two or three gathering stitches, gathering threads to go all the way around, you would just go all the way around and don't break your stitching. Just keep going from, you know, where you started to where you want to end is close to where you start, where you started. If that makes any sense at all. And so basically, now don't stop sewing. Just keep going all the way around from one side to the other side. So I thought, okay, that's pretty cool. That's good to know. So, wanted to share that with you. 
And there was something else that I learned or read about that I just never even considered. And that is using decorative zippers. I didn't even know that there was such a thing. So after I read the article, I started looking it up. Like, a decorative zipper, huh? What, was, what would that look like? And there were three that I saw. There may be more. But there's one that's rhinestone. So it has rhinestones on the zipper pull. And then also near the teeth. And so when you make something with this type of zipper, you pull it up. You can see the rhinestones. So I'll show a picture of like maybe a jacket that I found that had a rhinestone zipper. And I thought that was interesting. I was like, okay. The other decorative zipper that I learned about was a lace zipper. So I, I can see that being really pretty too. And then there is something called a rainbow zipper. And it, it has, like it sounds, it's just like a zipper with a bunch of different colors in it. Which I thought was really interesting. And I guess you could do a lot of things with that. So, I just never even considered using any type of, any other type of zipper than the ones that are just plain. Of course, I knew that you have the ones with the metal teeth. But I never even thought about the ones that are decorative or that there were even decorative zippers available. So yeah, those are the couple things that I learned that I wanted to share and pass on to you guys. Hopefully there's something that I shared that you can use. And let me now talk about my sewing make. So I wrote my notes down here. So the sewing make that I will be sharing is Simplicity 8636. And I made you a, when I first bought this pattern, I thought I was going to make the top. And I probably still will make the top. But I ended up making the dress because I realized I had enough fabric to do so. So I was like, okay, I'll go ahead and use up as much fabric as I can. I didn't really want to have a bunch of fabric left over. So I decided to go ahead and just use what I had to make the dress. Now the fabric is really interesting. It is called polyurethane. And I found this fabric at Joann Fabrics and I found it in the clearance section, but it was on the, it was in the home decor part of the clearance section. And it grabbed my attention because I touched it and it felt like tinsel, like a rayon tinsel fabric. And I was like, oh, this is nice. But then when I read it, it said polyurethane and I was like, can you make clothes out of this? Because I just was not familiar with it. So I took it to the cutting counter and I was talking to the lady that was cutting the fabric for me. And she said, yeah, you can make you know clothes out of it. And I was like, well, what, what is this? Why is this considered a home decor fabric? And she said that it's because it's waterproof. So I was like, okay. So I just decided to give it a try. And I'll share what the fabric looks like. So you'll see it up close. Because it looks just like rayon tinsel. It's really nice. It has a nice drape, a nice flow to it. It's beautiful. I was like, oh, I definitely can see myself sewing more with this type of fabric. It was new to me though. I'd never even heard of like polyurethane as far as like clothes. Yeah, so it was new to me. So uh, let me tell you a little bit more about the sewing make now that my nails are done. I just use white. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but I thought that white would be kind of pretty for summer. 
So yeah, and I don't want to put too many coats on because then I start moving around and my nails get messed up when it's too thick. So now this dress has a lot of gathering, which is why I was able to kind of shorten the gathering stitch that I mentioned before. So it has gathering around the top midsection and around the bottom ruffle. And then the neckline, it, it is gathered, but it's gathered with elastic. So you thread a piece of elastic through the front neckline, through the front neck part, not the sleeve part. And then you thread it through the back part. So you cut two different pieces and you thread them individually through the neckline area with a quarter inch elastic. I ended up making view A, but I used a longer sleeve of view B. And what else? That's it. It really is a simple dress. The gathering is what took the longest, but I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And like I said, I'm really crazy about the fabric. So I can't wait to share it with you and I'll go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so this is the chalk pencil, water sol soluble marking pencil. And I just have a piece of scrap fabric here. This is actually some faux suede, but just to demonstrate, I'm gonna use the opposite side because it's a little bit darker. So you may be able to see what I'm trying to demonstrate a little bit better. So something that I learned was that actually, if you use water, this is just plain water. If you use water, to make your mark, to dip your pencil in your water or wet it however you want to wet it. But wet the tip and then make a line. Your line will come out darker. So let me show you what the line will look like without water. Okay, so it's really kind of not showing up at all. So I made the line, but it's not really coming out that well. So I have to keep going over it just to kind of get it a little bit darker. Hopefully you can see that. But if I wet the tip with the pencil, and you may have to wet it more than once, but I'm going to just dip the water or the pencil in there and then make this line. And it comes out darker. See? So I thought that that was really good and it was easier to create the line or to get the line. I don't have to keep going back and forth so much. And it comes in handy for me mostly when I'm making a dot. So let's see, here's a, let me put a dot. It just gets that dot on there really nicely. So I like that little tip. And I wanted to pass that on. So that is my love share for today. If you enjoyed this video, I would love to know. You can click on the little thumb that's sticking up below.